As far as uh, you know, international efforts are concerned, of course, we're still in the same position as we always were, that if the Americans and the Russians agree substantial and significant reductions, then everybody else can join much more easily. S because they have disproportionately such a large amount of these weapons, it is very difficult to see how anybody else can give leadership other than them. And there is the possibility, I still believe, that Presidents Obama and Putin can meet later this year and can agree for very good and sensible economic reasons because neither of them want to spend, I don't believe, the money that will be necessary on these weapon systems, that they can believe significant reductions. The, the prospect of the others joining then becomes enhanced, but has ironically been complicated by the fact that they are now talking to each other. Let me, let me, let me explain that to you. Uh, a way back in 2008, 2009, I was very keen to get the P5 to engage with each other about verification, about transparency, about disarmament. In fact, all the rest of the NPT countries were too. Um, and we managed to persuade the other countries that that would be a good idea. So I announced it in Geneva. I was no longer the Secretary of State for Defence when they actually did meet, and they have now met on more than one occasion. My hope was that when they came together, they would be able to put forward a common face on the issue of disarmament to the NPT non-nuclear weapon states. And that was the hope of the NPT uh, review conferences as well. But actually, they've started to behave in a, in a way that I didn't anticipate which is they're beginning to value more their relationships as the P5 than they are the reason that they were brought together. And the evidence of that lies in their collective failure to go to the Norwegian Humanitarian Conference in March. The Norwegians convened a conference about the humanitarian effects of nuclear weapons in Oslo, invited the whole world to come, their overt ambition was to give non-nuclear weapon states a reason to be discussing disarmament by the nuclear weapon states. I believe that our country, the United Kingdom, wanted to go. I believe that the United States, if not keen to go, was willing to go. I believe that the Russians would have gone, but I believe that the Chinese and the French were unwilling to go. And in order to keep the cohesion of the P5, they decided not to go. So. We expected that they would operate together as part of a wider group, showing that they could work towards the NPT objective of disarmament, but they've become a sort of cartel. Um, and they're also very secretive about what they're discussing. It is the utter irony that one of the, the issues they're discussing is transparency. But we can't actually find out what they've said about transparency because they don't allow anybody to know what they're talking about other than the very highest kind of headlines of that. But, but these, these processes exist. And once the processes exist, they can be changed. So, for example, there will be a follow-on conference in Mexico about humanitarian impact of, or effects of nuclear weapons. I think it's pretty unlikely, given the demography of the United States, that any president of the United States would say, I'm not going to that. So they will go, I believe, therefore we will go, therefore probably the Russians will go, and we will see what happens to the French and the Chinese. I think probably the French will go too, and the Chinese may feel they need to turn up rather than to be excluded. Um, and that, that will be a seminal moment for those discussions. This whole process has become much more complicated than it was. But the trajectory of the number of weapons is still going down. And overall, the numbers are going down. Um, and we have to hang on to that.